So this man has you willingly tell even the most minute details of your life, packages that information up, sells it to advertisers, and makes billions of dollars for himself, and lands on the cover of Time magazine as the person of the year. While this man, contracted by the U.S. government, uncovers systematic and unprecedented abuses of rights by shadowy government organizations and programs, goes public to warn the world, and then proceeds to live life on the run and is called a traitor by the President of the United States. The files leaked by Edward Snowden, along with a torrent of news as to the extent in which our communications are being illicitly monitored, is staggering. From the phone hacking scandal, WikiLeaks, to anger caused by Facebook's emotional contagion experiment, where mathematical formulae were used to prompt different emotional responses in users by tweaking their news feeds. As things stand today, online communication privacy looks grim. The U.S. federal government is spying on the online activities of its citizens and even the internet within the internet called the Tor network. The most secretive way to browse the web is being monitored by the National Security Agency. Former communist East Germany was the most extreme example of a society of surveillance. Their infamous security service, the Stasi, kept meticulous files on hundreds of thousands of innocent Germans and used that information to discredit, blackmail and harass innocent citizens. Former Stasi Lieutenant Colonel Wolfgang Schmidt, when speaking on the current NSA's mass surveillance program, quipped, For us, this would have been a dream come true. The sentiment that is most readily thrown out to justify mass surveillance was neatly paraphrased by Google's own CEO, Eric Schmidt. If you have something that you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. And this echoes the sentiment of British conservative politician and life peer William Hague when he said, If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Stalin would have blushed. But privacy is not just for people who have something to hide. It's for everyone, even you. Privacy and the need for it are sometimes hard to explain or quantify. Why do we need privacy? Well, a few excerpts from an article published at teachprivacy.com gives a few of those answers. Privacy is about respecting individuals. If a person has a reasonable desire to keep something private, it's disrespectful to ignore that person's wishes without compelling reason to do so. The recent example of Hulk Hogan destroying Gawker Media with a $115 million judgment for them airing secretly recorded sex tapes of him is an example of gross disrespect of an individual's privacy. Privacy enables people to manage their reputations. How we are being judged by others affects our opportunities, friendship, and overall well-being. Although we can't have complete control over our reputations, we must have some ability to protect our reputations from being unfairly harmed. Think Clinton and the dress, Hasselhoff and the hamburger, Gibson and the Jews, Jackson and the children, Bill Cosby and date rape. An important reason why privacy matters is not having to explain or justify oneself. We may do a lot of things which, if judged from afar by others lacking complete knowledge or understanding, may seem odd or embarrassing or worse. It can be a heavy burden if we constantly have to wonder how everything we do will be perceived by others and have to be at the ready to explain. George Michael will always be synonymous with bathroom stalls and cruising. I'm not giving a moral judgment on this, but society will always affix the label of deviant to him whether it is true or not. He has been greatly diminished by the outing of this conduct and it's ludicrous not to admit this. But most importantly, privacy is key to freedom of thought. A watchful eye over everything we read or watch can chill us from exploring ideas outside the mainstream. Privacy is also key to protecting speaking unpopular messages. And privacy doesn't just protect fringe activities. We protect privacy at the ballot because of the concern that failing to do so would chill people's voting their true conscience. The U.S. government is tracking online activity in a surveillance program called PRISM. This program is plugged directly into the servers of nine internet firms. Among those are Google, Facebook, Yahoo, and Microsoft. When governments who are out in the open about working with corporations to identify and monitor your every move, there is a danger. What is legal today may not be legal tomorrow. 
data mining may or may not be used against you sometime in the future to coerce or blackmail you. People are already being arrested for posting their opinions on social media in Europe. Can anyone reasonably expect that the situation regarding internet privacy and freedom of speech, including anonymity, will get any better in the future? Facebook, Google, and all the other social media benefit when you give up information about yourself. They make money with your information and your content. By analyzing buying patterns, US big box retailer Target was able to predict one of its customers was pregnant. They even sent coupons to the teenager for maternity wear before the girl even was able to break the news to her disapproving parents. But what about if this improved ability to better understand the consumer was not used on products or services but on something such as to predict who is gay or who has HIV or who has unconventional sexual preferences or most importantly who is most likely to be a political dissident. And this is already being done to a certain extent. Cities in the US are now paying criminals not to murder. And if they can pay thugs today not to commit crimes tomorrow, who's to say that instead of paying them not to commit crimes, we will just lock them up before they even become a danger to the community? All of us know without a doubt that we're being watched online. Is it altering our behavior at all? We still seem to use services like Google and Facebook, probably because the convenience outweighs the loss of privacy. And yet, recent studies have shown that the revelation that the NSA is monitoring online activity has had a profound impact on some of our actions online. In particular, the page views on Wikipedia articles related to terrorism, such as Al-Qaeda or car bomb, dropped drastically after the June 2013 release of the Snowden's leaked information. So this is where we find ourselves as a society, living life under constant surveillance. But regardless of its perceived benignness, it nevertheless asserts a shadowy controlling power over us, the watched. And we are already self-censoring. A 2013 survey of US writers found that after the revelations of the NSA's mass surveillance regime, one in six had avoided writing on topics they thought would subject them to surveillance and a further one in six had seriously considered doing so. We've come to fear how our words, opinions, and beliefs may negatively affect our lives if they are misinterpreted or considered unpopular by the masses. Whether a joke is misconstrued or a political position deemed controversial, we have seen the negative effects this sharing can have on individuals' lives, and we've become frightened to share. What is the result of this? We've begun to eliminate the most powerful thing about sharing platforms. We've stopped using them for meaningful social debate because we don't want to risk our livelihoods on what we believe in. Many of us have become either weak or bipolar, strong and boisterous when our passions are ignited about the meaningless, or weak, perhaps even silent, when it comes to our deeper, more meaningful convictions. If it's not well favored by the masses, we just may shrink. Maybe it's that we understand very clearly the transaction. The internet is free and we wish to keep it that way so corporations have worked out how to make money out of something we are willing to give them in return, our privacy. We have traded our privacy for the wealth of information the web delivers to us, the convenience of online shopping and the global village of social media. Remaining unrecognizable and keeping conversations private online is immensely important. It's not just an issue for civil libertarians. Online privacy is crucial for crime victims, whistleblowers, dissidents, and anyone who would like their private matters to stay private. It doesn't matter if you have nothing to hide. Privacy is a right granted to individuals that underpins the freedom of expression, association, and assembly, all of which are essential for a free, democratic society. These freedoms are now being erased. The cumulative effects upon society will worsen as time goes by and each failure to defend our freedom builds upon the last and the end result is a cowed, scared and paranoid populace. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. The channel will be updated regularly. Yeah, I know.